Good morning. What a beautiful sunny morning. Friday, 2nd of December. And shalom, everybody. Peace be with you. I'm using that phrase because isn't this the season of peace? Wouldn't it be nice if we welcomed everybody with that? Shalom. Well, we're going to carry on reading now from the King James Bible, 1 Peter. I'm going to read to you chapter 4 and 5. Chapter 4. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice suffice us to have wrought all the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lavishness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but living, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality, one to another, without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister out the same one to another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trail which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. Chapter 5 The elders which are among you I exhort, whom am I also an elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Take the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, He shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, 
submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But in the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen by Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now at the beginning I said, Shalom, peace be with you. And the final verse of this one says, Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So he's saying Shalom right at the end. But he's also saying to greet one another with a kiss of charity. And this is the King James Bible. And they use the word charity to define <clears throat> agape love. No other dictionary, other <laughs> dictionaries, other Bibles will use love with a kiss of love. And they will use faith, hope, and love. And uh, I actually got into a little debate with a couple of people over that. And um, that was wrong. That was wrong. What I should have done was my research and realized that charity means love, agape love. But we only have one word. I don't know why we didn't adopt the word agape. It would have made sense. And that we could have understood it, that it is a charitable love, the same love that God has for us. Now the second thing that I underlined, and this was further back up, chapter 5 verse 8 and this is quoted so often by preachers and pastors around the country and you've heard it and you've heard it and you've heard it and this is where it comes from John be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour don't kid yourselves if you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe in the Holy Spirit, if you believe in God the Father, you must also believe in Satan and the devil. The unholy ones. The ones that will lead you to evil and the eternal flame of fire burning forever. He will devour you. He will consume you. And you won't even know it. You'll be in a padded cell padded with money, paces, padded with gracious living, padded with all the luxuries and trappings of this earth. And you'll think, boy, I've done good, haven't I? Well, not until you read the story about the rich man and Lazarus. Okay, I've read a lot. I've talked a bit. Shalom, everybody. Peace be with you. Have a great day, and remember... God loves you, his agape love, and I love you too. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.